which are causing all sorts of um, economic hardship, political discord, and on and on we go. And they're, they're on this path. They have a worldview that they, you know, they're, they're really looking for, you know, non-governmental world control on some of these issues. There, well, maybe, and, maybe, maybe, maybe we can come to the linkages in just a minute. I just wanted just again to try to bring the audience along on st stuff that I've learned from your book. Uh, what's interesting is that, you know, when you get into, which you do at great depth, into into the chaotic climate system and the the real difficulties in, in assessing the risks and, and coming up to any kind of modeling and when you can over engineer and the slightest mistake and your, your results are just crazy, can be crazy. But what's interesting is that, uh, you know, the, the, you know, one of the questions you posed, which I found really resonated was, well, reverse it. If the, if there wasn't such a narrow focus back along, you know, uh, about uh, human CO2 emissions. And it just happened. We, we just, you know, the, the, we were we were in a warming cycle since 1850 or since the end of the Little Ice Age, which went from the 13, 1300s around 1850. And it's just happening. And uh, there's all these other drivers to the climate. Uh, would we be concerned at all? I mean, would we be just saying, we'd be just adapting as opposed to believing that the, the world is over? I, I think that's very interesting. And also the point you just made that the, the, the UNIPCC itself has dialed down into the kind of the, the kind of moderate outcome, and but yet the politicians are picking the worst case scenario. And uh, so I think that's very interesting. But could you just walk us through? I'll, I'll just throw them at you here because I have a list of them, right? So we have solar, then you have uh, indirect effects from solar, uh, you know, from uh, solar radiance. There's volcanoes, a uh, big effect. There's there's big long effects from uh, changes to, to ocean systems and then natural vari variability I mean, all of those massive factors are out there in the in the climate system and we never hear about them i know we never, we hear, never about hear yeah i know i know and and the big driver for you know it, it's the natural internal variability el nino and la nina are the most common examples but there's decadal scale and multi-decadal you know scale oscillations that substantially um, influence on climate for, for the U.S. And, and Western Europe. I mean, the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation plays a huge role. It's currently in the warm phase. That could shift to the cold phase on the time scale of a decade, which would have a big <laughs> impact on weather in Western Europe in particular. Hmm. So, you know, there's all these things going on, and it's very hard to you know, separate the slow creep of global warming from the impacts of natural weather and climate variability. And they claim to do this with climate models that ignore most of these processes and they're simply not, you know, fit for the purpose of, of separating this out. So um, there's a great deal that we don't know. But in terms then of the, just the solar side of it, I mean, the, the, you know, the basic physics, it, it, the sun is at 115 times bigger than the earth and it's just the source of all the energy we've got um are coming onto the planet and uh, and yet that's kind of neutralized by these models and then there is an indirect effect from solar radi from 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 solar uh, energy coming through uh, which you've identified uh, as uh, you know in ultraviolet light and cloud cover uh, in the magnetic field and solar winds and all these things now, this is, you know, it's a complicated, chaotic system, and um, and yet it's only been modeled from just from one aspect. I, I found that interesting because it's something people can understand. Oh, yes, I forgot about the sun. You know, the UN seems, the UNIPCC seems to have forgotten about it, and the volcanoes, the effect of volcanoes as well. You've identified a number that had big impacts, you know, in the, I think it was 1257, thereabouts, and another one in around 1830. Uh, the, the, these are major events. Yes. Well, well, the logic that they used when they were using, looking at the extreme emission scenario and predicting four or five degrees centigrade warming by 2100, say, well, volcanoes and the sun's effect and the ocean circulation are trivial compared to that kind of warming, you know, and they almost are but once you get rid of those extreme emission scenarios and we're talking about half of that warming and and then those other factors are of comparable magnitude yeah so 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 that that's how they justified 
you know, ignoring all this based on the extreme emission scenarios that even the UN now recognizes as implausible and they've dropped them from consideration. They're now looking at medium emission scenarios, which give a much more moderate amount of warming, which is very difficult to separate out from the natural climate variability. Yeah, you said there in 2019, uh, in one of your reports, you said, and by the way, you've you've done, I think, 100 uh, papers over the years and uh, a few books. So you, you've obviously been pretty well published, whatever, both been well read until the Katrina moment brought you into the spotlight. But that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's karma, you know, <laughs> that didn't happen by accident. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah. But you said in 2019 that, that 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 man-made climate change is not an existential threat in the 21st century and that the perception of near near-term apocalypse uh, has narrowed policy options which is what we've been talking about but when did the un itself when did the ipcc begin to uh, dial down its uh, worst case scenario as its kind of main uh, main focus? well no no the, the, the climate scientists are still addicted to the extreme emission scenario. 